everyone, my name is Kelly Perry and today we are going to create a blush bridal bouquet using a spiral technique. It's really simple, very basic, um, and kind of a foundational piece that you can build on uh, to create other types of bouquets. So anyway, without any further ado, um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to start, this is a slight variation. Um, slight variation on the spiral. So traditionally it's a 45 degree angle you're going in over and over and over again. We're going to do something very similar to that, but I am going to start with hydrangea, which is going to create um, a pillow, an instant uh, source of stability for stems to uh, be woven through and to hold steady and still. That'll provide a really nice stable base for us to start working with. And I'm going to add a little bit of Artemisia and we will have some other flowers in and around to support this because it is kind of like Dusty Miller um, in the lamb's ear that I have here. It's one of those flowers that and anything that's out of water needs to be well hydrated but this is one that can get a little bit droopy um, so it's not something that I would want to collar the edge of a bouquet with um, but as long as there's other things in there to uh, hold it up and this hydrangea will certainly help with that. So we are creating tripod round and round and round and round we go and uh, we are going to layer through and rather than putting it right on top of the next one at a 45 degree we're gonna just it's a similar concept it's not a true what I would consider to be a true spiral but it's similar Now, just a word with the stalk, which is this flower, if you're not familiar with it. It is a flower that can be prone to getting a little bit um, rotten, for, a bit, for lack of a better word. And so that's just something to consider and keep in mind uh, whenever you're ordering. Make sure it gets a lot of nice airflow and doesn't get too wet. Um, usually starts with the lower stems and kind of works its way up. So just a word of caution with it, but that, not that that should keep you from using it or incorporating it into your work or your designs. And I love these taupe spray roses. I'm going to pop one in the center here with the lamb's ear. It's a very fragrant bouquet. Artemisia has a wonderful scent to it, as does lamb's ear. It's like we're creating a little perfume pathway for our clients, although this can be a little bit st stinky whenever you cut it at first. This is um, a type of allium, I believe. I'll put all the ingredients um, as you would want to have them to order them from your wholesale supplier. In the comments of the video, if you happen to be watching on YouTube, just search this title on teamflower.org for the full ingredient list, suppliers, and all those kinds of good things. The flowers that we're working with today are from Mayesh Wholesale, and the Artemisia and the Lamb's Ear, that's just out of the garden here, two things that I love to um, walk through and sniff in the garden. Beautiful scabiosa. We're just going to go with another layer on these. So we've got six use this might not be the um, 
there are all kinds of different types of techniques to get all kinds of different outcomes. This may or may not be the technique that you need to accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish. So if you're looking for something that is more sculptural, the way that you get to that end result is a little bit different. But this is a great technique if you're looking for something that is tailored and round. And I'm wanting to draw some attention down here to the bottom to get this hydrangea um, covered a little bit more. So we're just going to add a little bit more stock around the base. And break that up. These are my ARS clippers, and I really love them for uh, just the bottoms of bouquets because of the angle that they have. I also love, of course, my Joyce Chen's for an everyday kind of clipper. I'm adding in now some dried grass. and they, These are just so sweet and such a great texture. And these actually picked up from Michael's, the craft store in the dried section. So these will be a nice keepsake for the client. And I'm gonna put them in little pairs. One a little higher, one a little lower. These are pretty interesting, so these have a great texture. They're not, they don't um, actually feel really rough, but because of the variegation in the stems, they have a really interesting look. Something that most people haven't seen. I find that whenever you're putting arrangements together, if there's just even one thing that somebody hasn't seen before that you have introduced them to, it really lights them up and gets them excited about flowers. So in each bouquet and each uh, piece that I make, I try to make sure that there's just one thing that maybe people have never seen before. And in this one, there's probably a couple things that people have never seen before. Artemisia is not a really common um, foliage to have around. It's not a really common scent to have smelled before. And so I love that I get to bring things like that into people's lives for the first time. And it's really special too that we get to create this perfume pathway. Um, some of these things like the lamb's ear, the artemisia, like I mentioned, have come out of the garden. And it's things that they can plant in their own gardens at home that would be blooming around the time um, that their event took place or that their you know, special occasion happened. And so it's that little reminder that we get to give people that um, perfume pathway that we get to lead people back to these really special sacred moments in their life. And that is what I really love about flowers more than a particular style or technique. You know, all those things are good and they're important. But what I really love is that human component of um, 
the memory aspect. So I imagine that you might have a memory with flowers that is really special or meaningful to you. And um, that's something that we get to pass on to people who may have never stopped to quote unquote smell the roses before, or really never noticed flowers a whole lot in their lives before. So I just, I encourage you in your work and in your life with flowers that, um, that you would look for those deeper moments of things that we get to do and be in the world. I'm going to wrap this with some lace and all I did, I just used some oasis tape and I went around once and then I went backwards. And so the nice thing about this is that now I have a sticky spot to um, start wrapping my uh, lace around the bouquet. And I really do love using lace and kind of non-traditional ribbon types of things for bouquets just to make them feel extra special and um Lace is one of those things that can certainly come off and be a little bookmark in a photo, you know, in their wedding photo album or something like that. So I'm just taking um, a few turns around with this and then I am going to uh, just go and just pop a pin right there. I'm actually going to let this go ahead and hang down and I will get my fancy scissors out here in a minute, but I'm going to start a little, just a sweet little ribbon streamer right there. And then I will pull into that just a couple other ribbon tails here. Let's see the length we want to go with that would be right about here. And I think three would be So these last two pieces that aren't already attached with that hook, I am just going to layer them right on top of each other. And we are going to pin them in, just popping the pin actually underneath. So the pin will be completely hidden. And I'll put it in just right like that. And then we can finish off these little ends just right there where the lace is connecting. We can put these shapes back together. Great. So there you've got it. And in terms of the length of the stems here, um, normally I would go ahead and just put this into the vase and then I would clip it whenever I got on site. But I'm going to go ahead and clip it to the length that I would uh, typically leave it for this particular style and shape. Everybody has different preferences here. Some brides um, that I've had have requested like longer stems. Um, for me, it's not about the stems at all. I like to see the flowers and the little finishing on it. And so I tend to go a little shorter, um, a little shorter actually than this in most cases. But I think with the shape that we have of this, this is a nice proportion for a length on the, um, on the bouquet. So that's what I've got for you today. The spiraled, um, spiraled inspired technique, I guess you could say it's not the true, um, the true spiral technique, but it was a fun one to do. And you can see we have that sort of similar look going around the bottom there and this really easy ribbon treatment on the front. So it has been so fun to have you here today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next